There are 10 skills in demand we need to have in our roles more than ever if we want to succeed in the new world of work. As Carl Newport said in his book, Deep Work, in this new economy, three groups will have a particular advantage. Those who can work well and creatively with intelligent machines, those who are the best at what they do, and those who have access to capital. As most of us don't have access to this huge capital, we can definitely focus on the first two, learning how to work well, learning how to work with tools and intelligent machines, and learning how to be the best at what we do. Skills are the new currency worth investing, as I already mentioned mentioned in one of my previous videos. Let's start with digital literacy. Digital literacy once meant having a grasp of computers. Are we able to use computers as part of our roles? These days, it's a much bigger and broader concept because we have so many tools, devices, and platforms to really learn and use on a daily basis as part of our roles. One of the best ways to actually improve our digital literacy is actually to use these tools and really speak to colleagues who really know how to use them. Attend relevant training. I often find that organizations launch these tools as part of our roles, but they don't really talk a lot about behaviors required to use these tools. They will be simply launched for us to use, but then we have to find a way as to how they need to work best for us, which can actually cause quite a chaotic environment if it's not managed properly. I'm also sure you have heard about chat GPT, open AI, artificial intelligence is coming, which means there will be more and more tools that will be AI powered. So it's very important for us to have a go at all of these tools, really understand how we can use them. But if you see they're causing a bit of a ambiguity and confusion in the work, place, perhaps you can have an action to actually create a relevant behavioral etiquette to go alongside the tool to avoid any confusion down the line and really maximize the potential of the tool. Microsoft Teams, for example, are also going to include a new AI feature which will enable automatic generation of minutes after each meeting with action owners added. Isn't this fantastic and well overdue in my opinion? I really look forward to using this feature when it comes out. Data literacy. Now, data literacy is slightly different because it's all about data, as it says. As part of our roles, we find ourselves more and more working with data. We have to either report data, analyze data, get some sense of data, and make some recommendations based on data that solve business problems. I find this is a skill that not many people are quite comfortable with. I do encourage you to invest in developing this skill set. There is a fantastic website called the Data Literacy Project. I do suggest you go on it. There is a free self-assessment you can complete, and you'll get a free report that will give you step-by-step -step guide and places you can go to to really upskill yourself further there in this space. It's going to look fantastic on your CV and you will feel much more relaxed and comfortable knowing how to use and work with data. Critical thinking and problem solving is a key skill set to have as part of any role, any team, any organization or sector or industry. This is our ability to think, research, ask questions, analyze, form some problem statements and make some suggestions and recommendations when it comes to solving business problems. In my experience, people often make lots of assumptions, jump into conclusions and solutions without really really understanding what's the root cause of a particular challenge. Creativity and innovation. Being able to create and innovate as part of our roles is actually very important when it comes to key achievements. When we go for job interviews, we often have to talk about key achievements as part of our roles. What have we done, created, innovated, achieved as part of our roles that we are really, really proud of? So think about introducing something new as part of your roles and teams and organizations you work in. It could be a new approach to something, a new framework or a new plan, something really that deals with a particular a business challenge or a business gap in your organization. Think about reviewing, changing, introducing new processes that are slick and add value as well. Anything really that you would deem as your key achievement that you led on and created yourself. Emotional intelligence. Now, emotional intelligence is really important in the workplace. It's all about being able to understand our emotions and other people's emotions. It's all about dealing with uncertainty, ambiguity, and change that we see so much around us. Not everyone is comfortable with this, by the way, so it's very important to understand where your baseline is, how you find yourself dealing with these kind of situations, and what can you put in place to bridge certain gaps. If you would like to learn a bit more about your emotions, your emotional agility, and what steps you need to put in place to bridge some of these gaps, you can actually complete a free emotional agility quiz created by one of my favorite psychologists, Susan David, which is on her website, and you can find the link in the description below. Collaboration. Now, this is our ability to collaborate and work with other people in order to achieve something 
something together. It comes up very often in job interviews, by the way. You may be asked, give me an example, when you had to collaborate on a piece of work with others, what was the example and how did you go about it? So therefore, it's very important to understand whether it's a small team or a small organization, large team or a large organization, there are going to be people we have to work with. In my opinion, this is actually becoming more and more challenging because we've gone from in-person collaboration to now online collaboration, which is a mix of online and in-person collaboration, which brings different challenges as to how we can actually work together more effectively. I personally think that organizations have to play a big part in this role and create a work framework that can actually work for everyone in order for people to collaborate effectively. Flexibility. Flexibility is all about whether we can adapt ourselves to various change situations we find ourselves in and how quickly can we actually adapt ourselves to these various different situations and different people we have to work with. Many organizations are going through periods of change and improvements and transformations, especially when it comes to digitization, automation and artificial intelligence implementation. So therefore, it's all about understanding how quickly we can adapt to new changes and new ways of working. Leadership and management skills now more than ever have to change, evolve and adapt to the new world of work. As we now know, there are so many different work scenarios and how people work and how they need to be led. This is definitely going to test various management and leadership styles. So therefore, in my opinion, it's very important to actually establish and understand the new skills, the new leaders and the new management required for the new world of work. Self-management is a skill set. This is very important to understand how how you work, what's your natural work style, how do you work with others, what tools do you need to have and use to be productive, how do you manage your time, how effective you are, how do you actually work in general as a holistic person. This is very important to be understood and for you to put in place where you feel you've got certain gaps. There is something about all of us being organized, being focused and being delivery focused is also quite important. So therefore think about this one because this is the one that often gets debated in the workplace as to whether someone is seen as talent or not, which often boils down to how you work and how you actually approach your work. And the last one is about curiosity and continuous learning. If we are not curious, we are not going to learn. It's as simple as that. There has to be an element of curiosity to understand as to what's going on around us, what's going on about our roles, teams and organizations we work in. What does this mean for our skill set? What's our learning plan that we are putting in place to actually bridge some of these gaps to really feel we are ahead of the game and happy with our learning plan? This will enable us to actually adapt ourselves to various situations situations to be ready to have a good resilience plan in place as and when difficult times come. So therefore, it's very important to speak to people around you, to read relevant blogs, to research online, to be ahead of the game, to see what's coming up down the line. What are the predictions as well relevant for your role, for your chosen sector and industry as well? This often comes up in job interviews as well, by the way, as to how up to date you are with things and what learning plan you've put in place to be able to bridge some of the gaps. So therefore, it's worth investing further as to what does this mean for you and your role at the moment. That's it for this video. Let me know in comments if you have any questions. If you have liked this video, there are many other similar ones on my channel. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.